you're anything like me, you've written your share of APIs using .NET. One of the things I've always been challenged by is getting all the route information correct. Whether that was with MVC or that was web API or in .NET using controllers, minimal APIs, even in Razor pages, they all have the same sort of route system, but getting some help with getting it right has always been a problem because there's no syntax checking for the route itself, at least not yet. Let's take a look. So here we are in Visual Studio, and you'll see that I'm using a person controller, and this is for an API. This isn't about MVC with views. I also have a Razor page here, which we're gonna add a route to a little later. And then in program.cs, I'll write a couple of minimal APIs because I really want to understand how this is all working. And so over here in our controller, I have a simple get that just returns some testing data, but I wanna use some routes. We notice that the routes up here are specified for the root route. And that it means that everything we write in here is gonna be added on to that route. So let me do HTTP get, and I want to just get an ID in order to return the right person, right? Get one, and let's go ahead and just return results.okay ID, right? Should be doing something better with our API here, but we can see sort of what it is. And the problem is if I change this name later to the ID, I don't get any sort of hint that there's a problem here. When I compile, one succeeded, right? Everything is working in the way we would want it. But of course, when we run this, we're gonna return zero here. Why? Because this matched our route but it didn't know what to do with the ID, so it just left it as zero. It didn't know that this was tied to this at all. And in fact, we come up here and say name, get name, and I'll fix this ID since we don't want that to be aired out. Stop. Let's return that name. Again, no compilation problem at all. And you probably get what you expect here, the dreaded ambiguous match exception, right? We have these two and they match and we need to sort of figure out why those are the case. And so these are pretty easy to figure out. These aren't gonna delay your whole day, but I just wish there were a better way of doing this. And luckily for us in .NET 8, help is coming. So if we change this to a .NET 8, it was a .NET 7 project first. As soon as we do that, it's no longer a simple string here, right? It actually has color highlighting inside of the routes, and that's helpful. And we're even getting a warning that says this conflicts, right? We have the same one here. And so if we do, let's say integer, in fact, let's go back, I want to say colon, we can see all of the route constraints to make it a little easier for us. And I'm gonna say that is the one if it's an integer, and then I'll leave name the way it is. All the errors are gone, right? And we can see now that it's mapping absolutely correctly, right? Because this has helped us. In fact, if I do our little trick here of changing the ID, you're actually gonna get a little warning here. See the little dots that there's an unused route parameter of ID. It doesn't know that this is supposed to be the one, but it does know that they need to match. What happens when we build this? We're not actually gonna see the errors here. It's all in the uh, analyzers. It's in the uh, analyzers in Rosalind. So you're gonna need to look in the ID to see this change. But because it's in Rosalind, this should work in other IDEs as well, not just Visual Studio. I'm using the fourth preview of .NET 8, and that's where this stuff is enabled. But what about other places, right? We go to, let's say, the page here, and I give it API person dot name, right? This should be familiar to you. And when I compile it, nothing, and I'm getting nothing in here. And the main reason for this, because you can see we're getting the color 
and we can use the same sort of constraint system and all that. So it's working in here. It just doesn't know because controllers are one thing, razor pages are another, and in fact, we'll see in a minute that minimal APIs are also another thing. But of course, if we run this, and I did hello, I'm getting the return of the hello. I'm not actually accessing this page. Or if I change this to just person, obviously that's not going to be a route to return an API. So anywhere we're gonna see this is gonna be exactly where we want it to be. But let's talk about API specifically, because this is where it really gets kind of ugly. So let's uh, go over to program and let's add app.map get, and I'll go ahead and just say API person name. And I'll take a string of name. You can probably tell what I'm about to do because I'm incredibly predictable. Results.ok name, right? So we have a conflict between this and, and the controller, right? This is the same route as this one is. But right now the Roslyn analyzer isn't smart enough to know because these are in different technologies and, and possibly different files. If I run this, of course, if I go to something that would match, we're actually gonna see two things. We're gonna say that, hey, this get name that I have on the controller is conflicting with an HTTP get, which has this API. In fact, if we had different names and all of that, it would still conflict because it doesn't know which one is more important. Just because we have that piece doesn't mean it's gonna cross boundaries. And so let's do this as well. Let's make an ID. My mouse lost its mind. And so just saw, like we saw a minute ago, if I get rid of this int, we're gonna get that error because it sees that it's a conflict between these. There we can get rid of it. We're still gonna run into that problem that the person controller also has those sames. And so in running this, we're actually gonna get a, a ambiguous route exception even though it's not necessarily helping us. So let's just confirm by making a copy of our person controller and let's call this our animal controller. And so there we have our animal controller. And in this case, we can see that we don't have the problem, but even within different controllers, interesting, it was finding an ambiguous a minute ago. So this might still be a work in progress, but We'll have to see whether it's just based on an individual file or not. Because the real magic here, for me at least, is that it would work across all of the different routes that I'm working with. But it kind of makes sense, because if we're gonna use this API person or controller, most of the route overlap we're gonna get is going to be intra-controller or in the minimal APIs that you might run. I think we're gonna see as this matures, we might get some good news this week at Build that maybe this is becoming a larger benefit and can look across all sorts of routes. And so this is one of those features that relies on newer versions of the C Sharp compiler as well as the runtime, the .NET runtime, in order to work and help the IDEs do a better job. And I like it because it's not really depending on the functionality be built into the IDE. It's really at the language level, you know, because one of the things I was curious about is if I open up in File Explorer, and then let's go ahead and open this in code. I'm pretty sure this is not going to work in code yet because there has to be some, there has to be some uh, coordination with the people that are handling the IDE here. So we come down here and we can already see it's not, it's not giving us the coloring. So therefore I doubt that making this an integer is gonna give us any errors at all. But the hope is because it's outside the IDE, this actual functionality, that we still should be able to get it to work. So where does that leave me? I like where this is coming because we don't have to rely on the IDEs to bring in these new features. These Roslyn analyzers really are helping us do some very interesting things. Though immediately, especially in the preview versions, you're not really gonna see this be pervasive across the IDEs. It will have to catch up, but I think it will, because this is a feature that I think is really helpful to help us more quickly do things. You know, frankly, I've never used constraints all that much because I've never 
been exhaustive in the kinds of constraints. You know, when I started using this tool, I found out that there is a length constraint that I'd never used. And so something like um, a carve-in, which is always 17 characters, I could use that as a constraint for an API that might return cars. So I think we're headed in the right direction, and I like where this preview is going. I hope you do too. Thanks for watching Coding Shorts. If you've gotten this far, you know I'm going to ask you to click this like and the subscribe. Maybe you want to click the bell for notifications. I know we all say it, but I, uh, I feel obliged at this point, to be perfectly honest with you. I'm surprised that this little video project has lasted so long. This is our 61st video, and that just blows my mind that we've been doing this for a while now. I didn't even look at the dates. I just look at the sheer number of videos I've been producing, and, and I'm pretty proud of that. Uh, I've been trying to create one video a week, and sometimes two. So if you have suggestions about things you'd like me to cover, please put them down in the comments. And if you have your own opinions about this, whether it's helpful or not helpful, or having the ID do one more thing that we don't need it to do, put those opinions down in the comments. I'll be trolling them and trying to answer questions you might have, or we can have that discussion about whether this is a good idea or a bad idea. Thanks for joining me. My name is Sean Wildermuth for Coding Shorts. Mm -hmm.